In this video we're going to download and configure WordPress to work in the Ubuntu operating system running a LAMP server. If you have not already installed the LAMP server you're going to want to go ahead and download and configure that. I do have a video that shows how to do that. So once the LAMP server is up and running the next thing to do is to go ahead and download the WordPress application. So I'm going to go ahead to the web browser and go to wordpress.org. And once we get to the main page, we're going to go ahead and click on the download for the latest application. And we've got two options. We've got a zip file, which I would use if this was a Windows operating system. But since this is a Linux operating system, I'm going to go with the tarball, which is the .tar.gz. And uh, we're going to go ahead and download that. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it to my computer. And this should not take very long. It's only about 2.7 megabytes. And there it is. It's downloaded. So now that it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and go to the default location. Which in Ubuntu, it's going to be under Places and then Downloads. And this is the location of the download. And it's still an archive package. And so what we're going to need to do is extract it into a folder. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose Extract here. And there it is. Now this is the contents and within this folder is all the contents for the WordPress package to set up a WordPress site. And if I double click inside the WordPress you're going to see that I do have all these files here. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to copy all of these files and then paste them to our web root directory. I'm going to show you where that's at here in a second but before we can do that I need to change the permissions. Within Ubuntu uh, the default permissions do not allow uh, your regular user or just any login user that you have to modify the www folder or the root folder of the web. So what we're going to do is change the permissions and then later on we'll change them back. So that way we can modify the folder for a moment. So what we're going to do is go to system, actually we're going to go to applications, accessories, and then terminal. And the command that we're going to type in is sudo space uh, chmod space 777 and so what this is going to do is it's going to change the permissions to 777 which if you don't know the permissions what it does is just allows everybody to read write and execute uh, have capabilities for read write and execute. We're going to go space and we're going to go forward slash var the www and so this is going to go ahead and change the permissions to our www folder which is going to start off at our root directory then the var folder and then the www so this is the command that I want to choose. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it's going to ask for the password for your root user. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and the changes should have been made. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually go to this folder, this www folder and actually make this copy. We're going to, we're going to copy this and move these files to that folder. So I'm going to minimize my terminal and I'm going to go back to places and I'm going to go ahead and choose computer. Now we're going to need to go to the system or the file system. Look for that var folder. There it is. And now the ww folder which now has permissions for anybody to be able to read and write. You can see here that here is an index file that we've got. This is currently our default web page and what we're going to do is we're going to actually replace this. I'm going to go ahead and delete it which I just did and now what I want to do is move over all the contents within this WordPress folder. Now this is the setup for just a typical website running one website uh, using the server. If you're going to run multiple websites or, or hosts from this computer then what you're going to want to do is actually watch a video on virtual hosts which I'll be setting up here as well which will allow us to run multiple sites run from one computer. But in this case we're going to go ahead and run the one WordPress site. So what I'm going to do is highlight everything that we've got here. I'll just do the control A to highlight everything and then drag it, drop it into the WW folder. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And so now all of the folder contents have been moved into the WW folder and now we're ready to modify our site. So here's what we're going to do. If you take a quick look at this, the WP config sample PHP, we're going to actually make a file here when we run the setup called wp-config.php. This is the sample file, but we're going to actually 
go ahead now and modify our setup or run our setup wizard and make this wp-config file. So how we'll do this is go ahead and run Firefox. We're going to go to localhost and then hit enter. And you're going to see here is our WordPress configuration wizard. It tells us there doesn't seem to be a file wp-config and we're going to go ahead and go through the wizard and create this file. So I'm going to go ahead and choose create a configuration file. And what we're going to need to know is the database name, database username, database password, database host, and the table prefix. We're going to go ahead and say let's go. Now I need to have a database created. And so currently I don't have one, so let's go ahead and create one. I've also installed phpMyAdmin, so we're going to use the phpMyAdmin. And it's going to be the local host and then the forward slash phpMyAdmin like you see here. And if you've not installed the phpMyAdmin, I would recommend watching the video on how to install phpMyAdmin. So here we are, username root, that's the default, and then the password we chose. And this is going to allow me to create a new database. And these are the default databases installed. I'm going to go ahead and create one and just call it WordPress. You can call it what you would like, but I'll use Word, just the default name WordPress and hit create. And now I have a database called WordPress. I have no tables. We do not need to set up any tables. Our configuration is going to do that for us. So now that I have this here, I'm going to close out of the phpMyAdmin. Come back to my configuration. The database name is WordPress. I just named it that. The username is root by default. And then the password we chose. That's my default password I used here. And then the database host. Uh, usually it's going to be localhost. And since I'm running this on this computer, uh, the database is on this computer, my website is on this computer, I'm going to go ahead and use the default localhost. And then the table prefix is what they put, or the prefix for all of my tables that are created through WordPress. The WP is, and then the underscore is the default. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave the default there and hit submit. All right, now it says that, uh, it's all right, Spark, you've made it through this part of the installation. WordPress can now communicate with your database. If you are ready, time to install. So I'm going to go ahead and run the install. Create a site title. A username, which I'm going to go ahead and just use the default admin. Type in a password. and my email address. Now we'll scroll down and install the WordPress. And it has already been created. We're all done. And now it says the username is admin and then the password I've chosen. So I'll hit login. Type in admin and the password I chose. Now I'm logged into the back end. And if I want to see what my site is, come up here where it says your site name. I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose to open in a new tab. And I can see the front end of my site and now the back end of my site. Now before I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the browser. Before I'm done, I want to change those permissions. on that WW folder, if you remember. We don't want to leave it unsecure like that, so we're going to go back to the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and hit the up arrow, and instead of 777, I want to make it 755. We're going to go ahead and hit enter, and now that's been done. And that's the conclusion of installing and configuring WordPress in Ubuntu using the LAMP server and the PHP My